Hey, this is Little Wendy's Daydreaming, and today we are going to do the barbed wire, barbed wire stitch. Pardon my southern accent. And I learned this on Bag of Day's channel. This is the barbed wire stitch. And this is a headband. And I will put it on for you at the end and show you what it looked like. I do wear my hair short, as you can see. So in the winter time, I have very cold ears. So I do wear a lot of the wide headbands when I'm out feeding animals and doing different things. But I just like to keep my ears warm. And um, so we'll get into it. And I want to show you two or three different things that I have stitched up with this stitch and show you the difference in what it really looks like. Some materials, like this one, has viscose in it. So it's very stretchy, very stretchy, which is perfect for a headband. And I have some other yarns that I have repurposed because I just got tired of you know, a scarf or whatever. So um, I use them as some examples of some different um, thicknesses of your yarn and the different needles we also use. So I don't have um, too many different size needles. So I will show you what I have and we will show you how to do this. Okay. And let me tell you a little bit about this yarn that I'm going to use today. First, some of the tools that we need, of course, scissors. And we have a tapestry needle here. And I have a 6.5 6 or a K crochet hook. And this is the yarn that I'm going to use. And like I stated, it's it's stretchy. It's very nice for a for a headband. And of course, I got it on the clearance rack for ninety nine cents, which is always a good buy. This is a three point five ounce. There's hundred and fifty yards, which I have used some already. The uh, knitting needles is five point five, six point five in the crochet hook, which is what I have. I have used a 5.5 also, and I have used a larger crochet hook for something I will show you with uh, this same stitch. So this is, of course, red. This is from the Yarn B. Um, let's see. The, it is 48% viscose, 30% polyester, 22% nylon. So it should wash up really well. And for what I need, I will be washing it often because I put on my headbands and I go out and I feed my animals and anything outdoors, I have to keep my ears warm. So this is what we're gonna do today. Now, I did tell you that I got this pattern off of Bag of Day with Crystal. It was right-handed, and I am left-handed, so I had to watch it several times, and I've made some changes, so now I can do left-handed because I've never done right-handed. So... You will see this is for a left-handed tutorial only. I don't find a lot of left-handed um, patterns out there. There's several channels that have left-handed. When I learned to crochet, my grandmother sat in front of me like a mirror and she showed me just the basic stitches she knew. and. I may not have even been doing them right all these years because I never had anyone that gave me proper instructions. I just, you know, I learned a stitch and I did the best I could. So I have learned 
a little bit about crocheting over the years since I was 15. So that's like 50 some odd years. So first we're gonna start with our chains and we start with, you can, you can do this any number of ways. And if you want to, um, if you want a short headband, then you can have, or a, or, you know, a wide, I like the wide, uh, you can have skinny, so, but as long as you work in odd numbers, and I have worked as little as seven, but I've worked it also in a different direction, as many as 61. So that's what we're going to do this time, just because it's easier to work with. And, um, well, maybe we'll do the short one just because it'll go quicker. But this is for the headband. And I think we're going to do nine. I think nine is probably probably what I need to do. Put that on there right. And um, it, like I said, this is exactly how I hold it. Um, we will, and, and with this, with this stretchy, try not to pull it too tight because you don't want your work so tight that you can't get your stitches in and you can't pull your loops up. So I will hold it there at the bottom and we will go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and try to get them all, you know, about the same size. If you find you have one that's just really big or really tiny, just start over. There's nothing wrong with that. We learn by trial and error. So this is the first thing that we will do. And we're going to work from the third stitch. This is going to be a single crochet decrease. Basically, this is the whole pattern. And so it, it was very easy. So I'm going to go into the third stitch, one, two, and three. And I'm gonna pull up a loop. And then we'll go into the very next one and pull up a loop. So I should have three. And then I will yarn over and bring it through all three. I will single chain and the very next stitch, I will go in, pull up a loop, go in the next one, pull up a loop. This first row, you gotta kind of work it. Now, see, see right here, I got this a really long stitch. So, I'll just pull it out. I wasn't paying attention. I want them to look pretty close to the same. Go in, pull up a loop, go in, pull up a loop. Yarn over, bring through all three, and chain one. So this goes very fast because you get to the end very quickly. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to work in this third stitch. One, two, three. So you go in, you pull up a loop, you go in and yarn over, pull up a loop, you have three. Yarn over, pull through all three, one chain. Do the very next stitch. Go in, pull up a loop, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three, chain one. And we go in, pull up a loop, go in, 
pull up a loop. We have three, go through all three, chain one. Now we have the very last stitch here. So we're just gonna do a single crochet on that last stitch. And then we will chain two and we will turn our work. And let's do some more. I know you can't really tell at the moment because we just, you know, until you do two or three rows, you can't really see the pattern, seems like for me. Now, the second row, this is going to be your pattern through the whole project now, once you get past that first row. So, you pull your, your um, stitches apart and you will have one post here and one post here. You need to go between those two. So you go in and you pull up a loop. Your very next one is gonna be at the top here. See that right there? You go in there and you go in both posts and you pull up a loop and you have your three. Go through all three, chain one. Now, let's do it again. So you skip that first hole, you go into the second. You pull up a loop, and then you come up here to this stitch, go through both, try, yarn over, pull up a loop. You have three, Yarn over, go through all three, chain one. And I find if I go ahead and do my chain one, then I don't forget. Okay, skip that first one, go through this post, pull up a loop, you have two on your hook, you go in to this small stitch you have three now yarn over pull up a loop yarn over go through all three pardon me chain one okay now the last one you're thinking what am I going to do with that just because but what you're going to do with the last stitch is you're going through this top stitch right here that was part of your single crochet yarn over and that's what we're doing we're going to do another single crochet on the very end and then we're going to chain two turn your work and if you can see it is starting to develop a little pattern so here we go again you see that second hole right there that is the one this is where I have to really work hard at not pulling too tight okay we'll go in and pull up a loop the very next that little hole right there as you can see you go through both stitches pull up a loop you have three yarn over bring through and chain one so let's try it again. I'll keep doing this for a few times so you get used to it. And if you need to stop and start over, that's fine. Okay, we went in the large spot there. And see that, if you look, when we go into this big spot here, it makes the stitch longer, which gives it that barbed wire effect. Okay, and we'll go into the small stitch here, both strands of yarn yarn over bring through all three chain one and we go through this large stitch go through the small one now you have three on your loop yarn over bring through all three chain one need one of those handy little bowls that keep it from rolling all over the place. Okay. 
so. We gotta find that on this last stitch. We have to find that, that end stitch there. Yarn over, bring it through. Bring through both loops. This is just a single crochet, chain two. See, it looked like we were gonna come up short, but we don't. Okay, when you turn, see as you get better at it you'll recognize this skip that one and go directly to when you stretch it out you can see goes directly to that one yarn over bring it up you have two loops go through this stitch yarn over bring up your loop yarn over go through all three and chain one there we go kick it out of the way Okay, can you see where I'm going? Skip that first. Looks like there's eyes looking at you. See there? You go into that right side. So you go in, you bring up a loop, you go in that small stitch, bring up a loop. You have three, yarn over, go through all three, chain one. Okay. There's your, see there, that one right there. Just to the right of that long stitch. Yarn over, uh, bring up a loop, go in the small stitch, yarn over, bring up a loop. You have three on your hook. Go through all three, chain one. Okay, we're at the end. Now, we need to go in and just under this, this stitch here. Sometimes you have to manipulate it a little bit because you don't want to miss it. So you do a single crochet here, chain two, turn your work. Can you see now? out of the way so you're starting to see a pattern this is the long side of the barbed wire those long stitches this really is a pretty stitch I've I fell in love with it and I think I would like to make several things with it um, a scarf for one to match my headband so okay We'll just keep doing this until you get it the length that you want. And we'll do it a few more times just, just so that you can see me do it. Okay, and I'll stretch it out a little bit. You'll go to the right of that post, go under, bring up a loop, go in this top stitch, yarn over, bring up a loop, Yarn over, go through all three, chain one. If you forget a chain, you will know it on the next row, and then you'll realize that you've done it. So I kind of talk to myself when I'm, especially when I'm working a new stitch, I just talk to myself a little bit. Okay, so you can see you pull that apart, and you can see you're going in this hole right here. So you go in, yarn over, bring up a loop, Go into the little stitch, yarn over, bring up a loop. You have three. And this is my, this is where I, if I get them all the same length. So if one is really tight, this is where I kind of realize if I need to straighten it out. Yarn over, go through all three. Yarn over, chain one. Okay. We'll go through this one. Bring up a loop, go through the small stitch, bring up a loop. You have three on your hook, yarn over, go through all three, chain one. Okay, so how are y'all liking that? Okay, the very next or uh, last one is at this end stitch, we do a single crochet. 
Now chain two, turn your work. Now, what do you think? Now get it close enough. I really do like this yarn. It's, it's nice and bouncy, stretchy. So you go along all the way to your finished piece. Get it as long as you want and you can measure your head with a tape measure. And sometimes I just take the pieces, I get it long, and I kind of measure it to my head and I want it to be almost together because I don't want it too loose because I want it to give me that stretchy effect when I put it on my head. So I'll let you stop and go all the way through this and get it the length you need. And I will show you at the end what we can do next. So we'll stop here. Okay, now I'm going to show you, this is my finished headband. See how stretchy it is? It's really, I really love it. Um, and I, with this one, I use the mattress stitch. See, I went in and attached them. So this hook, I used a 5.5 for this one. The one I just showed you was a 6.5, only because I just found that at that one. Okay, now this is one that I did with a 5. And I did it long ways instead of short. See, the, the pattern is the same, but it does change the looks a little bit. So you can get two different looks. And this is what I did. And I may have made mistakes in there, but it's all in practice. So I just found this stitch and I really loved it. Now to join them together, if you've ever joined pieces, I use the mattress stitch. It's the easiest to work with, but it does take a few minutes to, and, and if that's, that's for another video, I guess, to go through and teach you how to do that. But um, I've got, let me get that out of the way real quick. I can show you the basics. And what you really do is you just match up your ends. I, because remember, I'm left-handed, so if I'm teaching someone this, um, needs to be a left-handed person. But I have to lay my work flat in order to get my, my pieces together. And if you have trouble with keeping them together while you work, um, okay, this is how I do the mattress stitch. My first stitch comes from underneath. And if you have these big needles, and sometimes they can be sharp, and I don't like them pulling the yarn, I go backwards. Uh, isn't that crazy? So you line these stitches up. You try to keep them straight. But when you go backwards, it doesn't pierce that, that yarn like it would if you were just going forwards with the sharp end. So I just pull it through. And... Then I go back and I get the next. You can see what I did. I put the little clippy right there and it keeps your work kind of steady. Um, because for some reason with the mattress stitch, I feel like I need extra hands. Um, so if I go backwards, it just works better for me. So you can just get right underneath those stitches. You can push through your work without it getting tangled. And I do it kind of loosely for three or four stitches. And, and that's what I'll do right now is I'll just run through this kind of quickly for anyone who hasn't done it and see it. I'm trying to keep those, those rows lined up And 
when I get when I get about three, then I'll pull it kind of snug. See what I mean about that needle going in pretty easily? Okay. So I gotta hold on to mine down here because I didn't, and so I just give it a little tug and this I will end up weaving back into the piece of work. So I just keep doing this. When I go a few more, with this being stretchy yarn also, you have to be careful not to tighten it too much, then it won't fit your head properly. So as you can see, like I said, I definitely need to put those two together. I'm not going to tie this off yet because I may want to put another couple of rows for my head. And this is, this is how I do the seam to attach it. So then I give it another tug. need to go ahead and weave that through there. So that's how I combine them. Okay, this is this is the pattern. In the long version as I call it. And I call this one the short version. And I made it this one a little bit larger or wider. And this one a little bit smaller. So I'll have two different ones. I also used this alpaca twist in the white. And it is 90% acrylic, 10% alpaca. And it called for a 6.5. And this is the crochet hook that I used for this one. And I'll show you. I did the very same thing. I did the pattern up and down. It's hard to tell. Oh, this is the other side. Sometimes it's hard to tell which side is up. So I did it in the white, which would go with anything that you wear. I haven't tied off the seams yet. Finished it up. And this one I did the same way. I did it in the long version. It goes this, this way. I did it in the long version. So you can still see the pattern. And this is very soft. Anything with alpaca I love. Just love it. So I did it in the long version also doesn't take much yarn at all and then I, this is the this is the hook that I used for the white one and let me show you what I used I had some a scarf that I it just had lost its its shape and I decided to rework it. Now this is very thick yarn and I honestly do not know anything else about it other than it is, I believe it's Big Twist, but um, a Red Heart from Walmart, but um, it's, it's very thick. And I had, I had this hook and I, I'm trying to think what doesn't really say there it is L it's very light um this is an L which is an 8.0 I used it and I started working on this and I I really liked the look of it but it's too thick for a scarf it doesn't have enough give and I thought you know this will make a great rug 
because it's very thick. You see how thick it is? It's very thick. So I made it in a scarf fashion just because I was working on it. But when I got, got done with it, I realized that this would make a really nice, thick bath rug. And I really don't have to worry about using cotton because I'm not in the kitchen. I use our cotton in the kitchens. But this is the same stitch, but it made a really, you can see all the fuzz on it. Um, but you can see how thick it is. So I use, this as a versatile stitch. You can use it with just about anything. And I hope you enjoyed this video with the barbed wire stitch. And we will see you on the next one. And I'll let you know what I'm working on then. So if y'all like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It always encourages me if you watch all the way to the end and share if you can. If not, that's great. We appreciate you coming back and watching again. And I will be working on something new the next time we see you. So we'll see you again. Don't forget to hit that bell and I'll let you know when something else comes up. Bye. From Little Wendy's Daydreaming. Okay, so we finished the little project tutorial and I'm going to put these on my head so that you can see how they work. You can see how short my hair is. Like I said, I haven't completely finished tacking this one, but I'm going to do it anyway. So this is how I wear them. So even the the narrow one, fluff up my hair, even the narrow one stays on my ears. So you can see how it would keep me warm. And they come off really easy. Now this is the wide one. And we will put, put this one on. So it works just as well. And usually the wide one, see how much it covers? It does really well. So when I'm going outside, I don't have to have a full beanie. If it's not raining, I just wanna cover up my ears and get a little warmth. So, and if I wanna do a full size beanie, then I keep going and I will do a full size beanie. But, so, This is my barbed wire stitch wide headband. So thanks for watching, you guys. I appreciate it. Come back again.